Blog Talk Radio. When you're born in this world, you're given a ticket to the freak show. It's reminiscent of those pictures we've all seen too much on television before when a building was deliberately destroyed by well-placed dynamite to knock it down. And when you're born in America, you're given a front row seat. So part of it is we have to break through our kind of private idea that kids belong to their parents. Forget the politicians. The politicians are put there to give you the idea that you have freedom of choice. You don't. There is no America. There is no democracy. You have no choice. You have owners. <laughs> they own you. There is only IBM and ICT and AT&T and DuPont, Dow, Union Carbide, and Exxon. Those are the nations of the world today. It's a big club, and you ain't in it. You know how naive you sound. Why? Senators and presidents don't have men killed. Who's being naive, Kay? They got you by the ball. Well, all right. Hello, 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 hello. Hello and welcome, my fellow freaks. Thank you for joining us here in the front row, the front row at the Freak Show, of course. It is indeed my pleasure to have you with us. I am your host, Crafty. And uh, let me tell you, it feels good to be back after having to miss uh, the show last week. Um, Of course, the show did go on. And uh, for that, I thank the man that will be joining us very soon here tonight, the Atomizer. Uh, But I would be remiss if I also didn't give a special shout-out and thank you to Bax, who uh, rode shotgun with the Atomizer for last week's show. Excellent job, fellas. It was uh, indeed a pleasure to uh, listen to the show in in its entirety the next day. Uh, Actually, so much in fact that uh, it has been agreed upon, and I'm very excited to announce here that Bax will be joining us here as a permanent fixture in the front row. Yes, he will be uh he will be coming on with us a little bit later in the show for a new segment called Backstage Pass and uh you freaks can look forward to that and eventually probably even more from from the Bax each and every week. So until we do get him on here live, uh he will be uh helping us out and uh, rocking the chat room. So get yourselves on in there and uh, get your freak on, of course. Uh, For the record, I know that there's been a uh, few problems, issues uh, that uh, some of you freaks have had getting into the chat room, and we are working with Blog Talk Radio on that. But uh, let me just say real quick, to join the chat room, uh, you do need to sign up with BTR. I'm sorry, there's nothing I can do about that. Uh, but it is supposed to be relatively painless. Um, or again, it should be. <laughs> uh, all you need to do, or all you need is a valid email. And I know, I know, that by itself is a pain in the ass. Um, hmm. And uh, sorry, I just uh, lost one of my monitors here for some reason. That was kind of weird. Uh, Power? Did I lose power? Sorry about that, folks. Um, Yeah, sorry about that. But uh, it is a pain in the ass a little bit, but um, hopefully not too much. And once you do sign in and get registered, then you can uh, log in each and every week just like that. And uh, so hopefully I'd love to see and get a really – you know, hop in chat room going, and it is a good way, of course, if you have a question for us on air and you don't want to call in, you can post it there, and uh, we will get to it. Uh, of course, we always love your calls, too. Uh, we'll open the phone lines, and uh, usually closer to the second hour, but uh, uh, but that's what it's all about, my fellow, fellow freaks, right? Getting engaged, hashing the shit out, communicating. So uh, pretty please, we sugar on top. Clean the fucking car. <laughs> no, call in, chat, let's hear from you. Um, and let's see. Uh, of 
other than that, um, Adam Eiser and I are coming to you, as always, from the glorious mise en of FEMA Region 1. Yes, I did just say mise en. Uh, <laughs> you are tuned into us here on blogtalkradio.com forward slash front row, where you can always go back and catch any of the archive posts or... Uh, you can also check them out on Front Row at the Freak Show dot com or Front Row at the Freak Show on YouTube. Uh, we do also have a Facebook page, uh, which we would love if you stop by and like. But uh, last but not least, for all you tweet heads, at Atomizer One and at at the Freak Show, uh, when we get backs on here for the backstage pass, we will ask him if uh, he has a tweet that he'd like to add to that little list there. And uh, oh yeah, crafty at front row at the freak show dot com if you would like to uh, to email us. So now that all that bullshit is out of the way, um, let us turn to everybody's favorite atheist Indian mountain man communist, the atomizer. Uh, atomizer, you got your ears on, good buddy. Atomizer. Let's see if I can. Adam, are you with us? Oh, yes. Thank you for unmuting me. Uh, I can't quite. Uh, as you know, I'm a little limited on my tech tonight. Can you hear me now, loud and clear out there? <laughs> we can hear you loud and clear. How you doing, good buddy? Oh, I'm doing wonderful. And yourself? I am doing good. I am doing good. Of course, you know, it uh, wouldn't, be a, uh, wouldn't be a front row at the Freak Show without some technical difficulties. And... Uh, just weird. I it's like I lost power to my Oh, now I'm back up and running. All right. It must have like I don't know, something happened there. But uh uh no, doing good, you know, feeling good as I said to be back in the uh in the big chair this week after missing last week. Um and so I am definitely chomping at the bit here to get going. And uh how about yourself? What's going on, Adamizer? Well, I'm really good. Actually I uh got to have a few shots before the show tonight, so uh be prepared for a little bit of anything tonight, man. <laughs> nice. A few shots of... A few shots uh, tonight of... of uh, it, it's Curzan uh, Spiced Rum. It's what my mother-in-law had in the house. And, uh, you know, I've got a, an apology coming up that uh, I need to make, and I figured a little liquid courage wouldn't help with it. wouldn't hurt with that. Anyway. <laughs> 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 yeah, we'll get to that in a minute. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. No, but that was my excuse. I, uh, I said to my mother-in-law, I'm like, I'm like, you know what? I'm like, can I have you a little of your boo- your booze? And she says, uh, uh, why? And I said, well, I have to apologize tonight to somebody that I really don't like before I cut them to shreds. And and she's like, all right, yeah, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> oh well, I'll be looking forward to both halves of that. Um, oh yes, yes, of course. So you know, but it's it's uh, it is funny, Atomizer, because I, I really, you know, perhaps ultimately we will uh, start off with that. But you know, I, I I don't really know where to start. I, I think it was Saturday afternoon, maybe when I checked in on Drudge, and it seemed literally like half the page was red linked. You know, massive quake in Nepal. Yep. ISIS is minutes away from a major attack here in the U.S. Baltimore was on fire. The Russians were oh, yeah, hacking Obama. And, of course, yeah, you know, and, of course, Jay-Z is in an epic battle with Apple, right? <laughs> you know, so <laughs> real heavy stuff here. You know, just a wee bit going on in this uh, in this thing we like to call the freak show. But, uh um, hey, let me just throw it out there, and I do see that Bax under the uh, under the name I wish I was Data. Uh, he is rocking the chat room along with a couple other folks we got going on there. But uh, I do have it up in the chat room. But our front row at the Freak Show live chat question of the night is simply: Who is your favorite alt media personality, uh, or what is your favorite you know, alt media source, podcast, blog, etc.? Obviously. We mean after front row at the freak show, of course. Uh, I'm not sure that the atomizer would be answering that with uh, with Alex Jones and Infowars. I'm going to take no, a guess. No, no, no. Now, would you uh, though? Now, now, is that your choice though? 
<laughs> oh, he's putting me in a corner early. Uh, uh, no, I'm not asking you to, to give me pro and con on Alex. I'm just saying, what would be your answer to that question? Damn, I wasn't expecting to answer it. No, um, <laughs> you know what? I'm going to no, I No, at the current moment, and it's funny because I actually – uh, didn't even kind of realize it, but I, I ended up with two clips from him uh, for tonight's yep. show. And I have been uh, just very much into him lately. Uh, and uh, he's been pumping out a lot of good material. Uh, so it might be a little boring or whatever answer. But James Corbett right now is probably leading the charge for me in the alt media world. Yeah. Yep. Yep. I, Alex can running. I, can, I can respect that answer. Well, well, thanks. You know, and Alex, hey, I listened to Alex today, um, and uh, it it hasn't been as I told you. It hasn't been as much that I've been tuning into Alex, but uh, I did tune into him today, uh, albeit briefly. But uh, um, well, we'll get to him in a second. Um, yeah, we will. You know, yeah. let's just throw, let's just throw it out there. Uh, first of all, uh, you know, main topic for the evening tonight is going to be alternate media, and. Uh, it's a topic that I've really wanted to hit on for a while, and uh, you know I don't know what you or you know Bax a little later on is is going to specifically bring to the table tonight. But more than anything, I want to discuss uh, really specific alt media shows, personalities, platforms, and try to shine a light, you know, on some of the good ones out there, um, and help some of the good freaks listening so that maybe they don't waste as much time as I did. Uh, trying to find and discover, you know, what I consider now to be a pretty good base uh, and source of information, you know, because I think we can all agree, right, as good and awesome as the Internet is and obviously how crucial it's become to the whole idea of alt media, it's still pretty much a wild-ass jungle out there. And obviously anyone and everyone can and does post what they believe to be news or the truth. So, um oh, yeah. You know, at least for me, tonight's show is to try and, you know, help folks navigate that and provide some, you know, maybe some good jump-off points where you know, they can go from there wherever they want, you know? Yeah, no, and, and you know what, I, I think the, the, the key theme that I wanted to bring to the table tonight, and I'll go ahead and mm -hmm. throw it out there early on, is that uh, there's a lot of alt media out there. There's a lot of alternative media that you can choose from. Um, but just because something falls under the heading of alternate media doesn't mean that it's not agenda-based, doesn't mean that it's not trying to push its own program. Um, so, you know, I think that's what we're trying to sort through tonight is the folks who are... Hmm. I know, wonder where you're going cherry with picking that. stories. Yeah, the, some folks <laughs> cherry-pick stories. Some folks have a, an agenda to push, and maybe that agenda in some cases is just to, to bring their advertisers money or whatever else. Uh, but there is some real folks out there looking to put truth in your hands, and those are the folks we want to talk about tonight more than anything. Absolutely. Uh, especially starting with us right here in the front row. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, um, yeah, before we dive really into it, um, I did just want to kind of back up, because I did, I took a look over the last couple of shows, so obviously even though I wasn't there last week, but, you know, we've discussed, uh, you know, kind of back-to-back -back here, uh, mainstream media and propaganda. And uh, hopefully we've established at least somewhat here that, well, you know, almost they're pretty much one and the same, right? Um, in, in a lot of cases, and, absolutely. Uh, yeah, so, you know, I thought it might be a good time to just take a, a minute for a quick re recap of, of those last two weeks as kind of a... Um, a uh, prelude to to the alt media, uh, but it's clearly documented and established that you know for at least go back as far as you want at least a hundred years now in, in terms of modern times, uh, there's been the realization by the elite slash ruling class on the necessity and importance of controlling information and public perception. It's, right, you know, pretty self evident. And uh, what is the byproduct? of that necessity after 100 years now. Well, it's the mainstream media, where 90% of all TV, print, and radio are owned by only five major corporations. 
And where, again, documented and established, the CIA and other intelligence agencies have joined with or just as an extension of that elite ruling class to further control, distort, and otherwise manipulate the public or <laughs> us. And uh, you know, I was trying to think, and, and I should have just listened to it again real quick, but I uh, you know, couldn't go through the whole show to find it. I know one of you guys brought up Joseph Goebbels last week or a quote of his. I think it was Bax, right? I believe so, yes. Yeah, and I, and I, and I just I don't remember the quote, but, you know, I, I found a quote of his. Well, there's a quote of his that's pretty, you know, pretty popularized. Uh, but there's an extension to it that I that I wasn't as familiar uh, with, and I wanted to uh, uh, kind of use this as a jumping off point here tonight. But anyway, this is from you know Nazi extraordinaire Joseph Goebbels or Goebbels, however you like to pronounce it. And uh, he had said, if you tell a lie big enough and keep repeating it, people will eventually come to believe it. Now, that's usually where the quote stops. Um, and is, well, but now, again, pretty know, popular. Uh, isn't that the uh, Fox News motto these days, or, or is it something about Sarah Gallagher? <laughs> I think it might be. <laughs> um, but anyway, he does continue. The lie can be maintained only for such time as the state can shield the people from the political, economic, and or military consequences of the lie. And it thus becomes vitally important for the state to use all of its powers to repress dissent. For the truth is the mortal enemy of the lie. And thus, by extension, the truth is the greatest enemy of the state. Yeah. See, I'm, I'm, I'm just going to throw out there, I, I think the state in a lot of these types of quotes and a lot of, you know, especially, um, uh, you know, proposed alt-media type stuff, the, the state gets painted um, in, in the libertarian world. As the, the bad guy, I think that, uh, you know, we have to remember that the state works for people and the the problem that we have is the state doesn't work for working people these days the state works for non-working boss class owner class type people so i i would absolutely agree with that statement but i think you need to to swap out the state with uh the, the simple phrase those in power because nowadays those in power really aren't the state the state is at the mercy of the the money men and i think that well, you know, it's, it's hey. Say again? No, I mean, I agree, but I think that, you know, is kind of indicative of the times and everything else, right? I mean, the state, you talk about the state in terms of, you know, America right now or whatever. You know, are, yeah. are, are you talking about, you know, Congress, set, you know, our three branches of government? Um, uh, well, that's, or, that's what a lot of people want to paint the state as, whereas the reality is, again, the state is just the lapdogs of the corporations, the 1%, however you want to look at it, you know, oh, exactly. they're, they're taking That's orders right. at this point. Yeah. Right. I mean, I wouldn't interpret it almost any other way, right? I mean, the state. Right, right. But I, I just class. think that's an, important, that's an important distinction to make in that quote is to say that the state, uh, in our current times, it really doesn't have to do with public representation at all. And, and uh, you know, the, I think the quote indicates, obviously, that the state isn't about public representation. It's about the, the folks who are representing the, the interests of power. And, again, it's it's not the working people in this country who have the power. It's not their representatives that have the power. It's the people who have the money to elect them, the money to lobby them, et cetera. Those are the people whose interests the truth goes against. Well, Sure. And, and again, you know, not to spend too much time on that, um, you know, obviously when you when you're dealing with a quote, you're dealing with a quote, right? So can't oh, yeah, start yeah, interjecting. Yeah. I, I think you know, it's I think it's a very words, valid right? quote. So, again, it, you just have to clarify what state means in that context. That's all. Sure, and by that, you know, extension, I mean you have to qualify what the truth means, and you have to qualify, what, right? So, uh, you know, my my favorite. Yeah. I just want to say my favorite hashtag on Twitter has always been words mean things because nowadays people are twisting these words to mean things that they don't mean, and and that's you know again, it's a big part of 
the awareness I'm trying to raise out here is, is just the idea, you know, and I think we're trying to raise out here is don't let people poison your worth. Don't let people turn socialism into some demon that doesn't have anything to do with public libraries, public roads, and firehouses and shit like that. Don't let people turn, um, uh, you know, liberty into something that means voting conservative. You know, it's it's these words actually mean things. And if you don't have a dictionary, you know what? We'll start a fund on uh, GoFundMe and we'll buy you one. <laughs> Ooh, nice. I like that. All right. So anyway, um, that is where hopefully um, alt media comes in, right, and can make a difference. Um, Absolutely. I think alt media, alt media is the only folks out there still trying to tell the truth in a lot of cases. As long as you're sifting through again the agenda-based stuff versus the uh, the, the, the truth-focused people, which is, our, which is our goal. All right. right. Yes. Absolutely. And uh, why don't we get to that goal? Uh, let's take a quick 30-second uh, uh, time out here, uh, and we will be back, and I think we will uh, get that uh, apology from Adam Heiser <laughs> coming up yes, in uh, yes, 30 seconds. So stay tuned. Conspiracy, maybe. Screwed. Definitely. Hey, you're listening to The Front Row at The Freak Show on blogtalkradio.com. For all things Freak Show, please visit us at frontrowatthefreakshow.com. Find us on Twitter, at Adamizer1 and at, at The Freak Show. And of course, Front Row at The Freak Show on YouTube and Facebook. All right, you freaks be good now, you hear? At the foothills of the river I trip Falling to frustration All right, and we are back, and uh, it is Crafty and Atomizer joining us, uh, oh, probably about uh, 20, 25 minutes or so. We'll be back, and uh, this is Front Row with the Freak Show, and uh, well, Atomizer, I guess, uh, do you want to preface this anyway? I figured, you know, since we were going to be talking alt-media, uh, there was there was going to be no way around a uh, at least a small discussion about Alex Jones um, and Infowars. Uh, I think arguably Alex is uh, for better or worse one of the, if not the, uh, you know, choose your words carefully. Biggest. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, most listened, most viewed. Yeah. Uh, yes. popular uh, alt media personalities and and uh, platforms. Absolutely. Um, so um, you know, obviously, you know, it, it 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 regardless of what was said or not said last week, I think we would have needed to uh, spend a little time um, on Alex. So, would you like to take away uh, your your part here now and maybe yes, maybe absolutely. knock back and, another and before shot. i get to that let me just apologize that, uh, <laughs> tonight again i'm well no no I, I want to apologize for something else tonight i'm a little limited on tech i won't be able to apparently join the chat room uh however i'm sure crafty and Dax are uh chatting you folks up out there so again my apologies i'm normally uh trying to be big in the chat room i can't be tonight now uh speaking about apologies okay um uh, i I hate to be wrong, uh, as do all folks, but uh, I, I think it's very important to admit when I've made a mistake. And uh, talking a little bit about last show, I did make a, a bit of a mistake. Now, I want to put this into context, not as an excuse, but just so that people understand. Uh, you know, we've been doing Scuttlebutt. Scuttlebutt is uh, five stories each from uh, my co-host Crafty and I. And uh, five stories is an interesting number because we were doing less earlier on uh, when we upped it to five stories and we wanted to kind of bang out five headlines, uh, I found that, you know, throughout the week I would pick up, you know, three or so headlines that really caught my eye on Twitter or whatever else it may be, uh, and I would I would love to do those ones. But, you know, when Monday night rolled around, I would be out there and I'd be searching for those last two stories so I could send over to Crafty, make sure we didn't have any overlap, et cetera. Um, and I would be kind of going through those in a hurry. And last week... One of the stories that I did was on Alex Jones. 
Uh, it was something I found last minute, and I kind of did it in a hurry. And I looked at the article. The article, uh, and some of you who have listened to the show remember that, that me talking about this. Uh, I looked at the article. I read the article. I watched the video. Uh, the, uh, but I did it all kind of in a hurry. And the article put me in a frame of mind, which then listening to Alex Jones doing his bounce around that he, he kind of likes to do, uh, I did not sift through personally, and it was brought up to me later on, uh, that I did not uh, uh, I did not properly vet this the way that I, I had hoped to. So uh, if you remember correctly, the story was regarding Alex Jones uh, talking about the Oklahoma City bombing. And uh, according to the article, they, they kind of, I don't want to really disparage the, the news agency. I think that they, they had a few words uh, wrong, whether that was on purpose or whatever else, uh, in their summation of, of what Alex had said. And I kind of read that, but I watched the, the short video uh, with that in mind, and it kind of uh, led me down the wrong path. So we were talking about uh, how uh, what the, the quote, the way it was worded in the article was to say that Alex had uh, uh, basically, it, it gave the impression that Alex had not only attributed the Oklahoma City bombing to the government, but had also uh, decided that the motive for that was to bl was to make conservatives look bad. Uh, after being approached about this and taking a second look at that, at the video where he talked about this, uh, that's actually not correct. What he was talking about was. Uh, whether or not he ascribes the, the Oklahoma City bombing to the government or not, which was a minor piece of my commentary, the major piece of my commentary was on the idea of their motive being to paint conservatives as being bad guys. That was not what was said in the video. What was discussed in the video was the fact that, in retrospect, CNN was now using the Oklahoma City bombing to paint conservatives as the bad guys, not that it was a motivation for the government to pull off the, the particular bombing. So in that sense, I absolutely got it wrong. Uh, I do want to apologize to the fat man. I do want to apologize to the audience. Um, <laughs> make sure that, that it's clear, you know, and, and I'm going to tell you why I did it. Um, I do love to take shots at Alex Jones from time to time uh, for the right reasons, Okay. Uh, this was me taking the wrong shot for the right reasons. It was me, again, hurrying through something, which I do apologize for. I was in the wrong. Uh, but I do want to take that and, and sort of extend that and, and sort of take the opportunity to talk about why I do enjoy taking shots at Alex Jones. I feel that, you know, we're going to talk all media tonight. I feel that, that in a lot of ways Alex Jones tends to give all media a bad name. It's not because he's fat. It's not because he's a, a Christian. It's not <laughs> I hope not. <laughs> and it's it's not even because at his core he's less libertarian and more Tea Partier, as as we discussed uh, between Crafty and I during the week. Uh, you know, my issue with with him comes in in a couple of ways. Number one, I feel that he's a sensationalist. Okay, I feel he takes certain stories that uh, really are are non stories and hypes them up to a, an nth degree. A uh, perfect example, what, what turned me off from him in the, in the first place, and I think it's important to share this with the listeners, is that uh, he took this story about, uh, it was something on Facebook, and I don't remember whether it was ISIS beheadings or something like that, but he, he took this thing where uh, somebody had posted pictures on Facebook uh, that were of a, a uh, you know, the type of nature that, that InfoWars would put out there, and Facebook took the pictures down, and he started crying conspiracy on the part of Facebook. Uh, it was quite clear from from just just from reading his article. You didn't even read the need you need to read anybody else's article that uh, uh, you know Facebook did not uh, make some sort of executive decision to suppress these images or whatever. If anything, uh, people who disagreed with the politics of the people who posted the images had made complaints. Facebook, uh, as is their standard policy, uh, addressed those complaints by taking down the pictures. Uh, there was certainly no conspiracy on the part of Facebook. I think that was kind of obvious. Uh, really bugged me that this was one of his headlines. Uh, and as I've, I've explained to Crafty as well, 
the other thing that, that kind of bothers me, and, and I'll explain why, uh, if any of you have seen the, the exchange between Alex and Pierce Morgan, uh, it was particularly over gun control. Uh, here's the way I want to I break that down, and I've, I've thought about that long and hard this week. Uh, now, when I debate somebody, okay, when I'm, I'm debating a particular topic, whether it's gun control, whether it's communism, whether it's anything, okay, I like to play a little bit of mental chess, all right? Uh, you may remember our discussions with uh, Dave, that, that uh, caller who called in who was trying to explain to us that uh, mm -hmm. he cared more about veterans because he donated to veterans' causes uh, versus us trying to promote awareness of the fact that these wars are being fought for the wrong reasons and people need to uh, stop condoning uh, these wars and, and start, uh, uh, you know, not necessarily rising up in the streets, but at least protesting yeah. more when we decide that something that was done probably, you know, in conjunction with Saudi, certainly not with Afghanistan or, or Iraq, gives us an excuse to invade Afghanistan and Iraq and send our boys over on the grounds over there. We're trying to raise awareness mm -hmm. about that. Um, I think that's at least as valid as donating to these causes. I'm not somebody who... Uh, donates money to causes because I don't, uh, I, I've kind of turned my back on money in a lot of ways. I donate my time to a lot of causes, uh, just as I do here on the Freak Show when, again, we talk about these wars and so on and so forth. Uh, so this exchange with Piers Morgan, for those of you who've seen it, um, uh, you know what I'm talking about. For those of you who haven't, um, I, I encourage you to go out and find it on YouTube. Uh, Alex doesn't play mental chess when it comes to debates. Alex plays a mental game of cowboys and Indians, and he is the cowboy, and, and that is the way that it goes. Um, I don't really respect somebody who tries to win arguments by belittling their opponent. Um, I, I think that that's the, the absolute wrong approach. I think that facts, letting the facts speak for themselves, uh, gambits, again, I, I play mental chess, so... When it came to Dave, perfect example, uh, I sort of trapped him into saying, well, you know, if you're, those of you who have heard of that, that particular show, uh, well, what you're talking about, Adam, is, 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 is uh, class warfare. And, you know, I'm a communist. I'm all for class warfare. I feel that class warfare was started long ago uh, by the owner class in, in a covert way. I think we're already embroiled in it, and we might as well embrace it, use our numbers, and fight back. Uh, so I kind of trapped him into saying something like that, uh, having the perfect response in my head lined up. This is the chess game I like to play when I'm debating. Whereas, again, Alex Jones kind of comes out in Cowboys and Indians fashion and likes to bully people into... Uh, he cut out there? Opinion. My opinion, you know, and this is, again, my opinion of Alex Jones. Um, I also, and, and again, you know, Kraft, you may disagree with me on this point. All right, so I cannot hear Atomizer. Um, oh, I'm, I'm assuming sorry, that he is uh, maybe someone in the chat room. Uh, Bax, can you hear Atomizer talking at all now? Um, can anybody hear me? Is, Hello? If not, you can. I, I can no longer hear the Atomizer at all. Okay, can you hear me now? Hello? Hello, Radio Land. Anybody? See, now I can't hear you. Anybody? Anybody? Hello? Hello, hello, hello? Hello, hello, hello? I'm here. Are you here? Can you hear me? I can now, yes. Oh, okay. I'm, uh, again, I'm having some uh, technological challenges tonight, and uh, I, I oh, do I apologize got, for that. I got booted off from BTR. Just fantastic. Oh, okay. You guys are, okay. Right. <laughs> I'm sitting there going, hello, 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 radio land. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I wish. Okay. I wish, All right. Uh, so that wasn't on my yeah. end. All right. No. All right. Um uh, well, as I was as I was saying then, and I'm, I'm glad the audience could hear me, is that um, you know you may disagree with me here on this, Crafty, but um, you know every time I tune into Alex Jones, I can't go. It feels like I can't go two minutes without him bringing up Nazis, 
communists, whatever else. And, you know, again, this this is the type of thing that I feel is uh, blatant fear-mongering on his part. Uh, if you listen to who his advertisers are, it's all prepper outfits. It's all, you know, people trying to um, uh, sell you, you know, a, a survival kit or whatever else it may be. Uh, I, I feel like he, he really is trying to uh, fear monger is, is the word I like to use all the time. Mm-hmm. I, I think that's that's his business. Fear Socialism is, is yes, exactly. I, I feel like he's 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 telling you know certainly at least half truths. You know, probably more than half. You know, I will give him credit for that. Um, I think he certainly does believe a lot of the stuff he's saying. But I, I, you know, I'm, I'm just going to say that I, I think that what he, you know, he's he's a capitalist. He, he's certainly a capitalist, and I, and I don't hold as much against him the fact that he's sad, or the fact that he's Christian, as much as I do the fact that he's a capitalist. He is more interested in making his money than he, you know, than he is in uh, really educating people, and and that's not what Front Row the Freak Show is about. Front Row at the Freak Show, you know, again, we don't have any sponsors at this point. Uh, while it would be nice to get some to, to help with production values of the show and everything else, uh, you know, we're here to educate folks. We're here to give you the truth and the unadulterated yeah. truth, the non-agenda truth. And I just don't feel that coming from Alex Jones. So while I fully apologize yeah. for the mischaracterations last week, I'm I'm not going to sit here and kiss the man's fat ass because I think that, again, he's he's the – Example of the kind of alt media that you need to watch out for. It is agenda based. He's pushing an agenda that's no different than that of the Koch brothers, the the rich one percenters who want to repeal all legislation, repeal all regulation, uh, put workers back. You know, every every fight that workers have won for the last century or so, and send that all back into the dark ages, essentially reviving slavery. I have no interest in that sort of thing, and you know. That's kind of my two cents on Alex. I, I you know, he, he picks up some good stories, okay, and I'm not saying that you should assume every story he puts out there is false, uh, or that certainly that he doesn't believe in the stories that he's saying. All I'm saying is be careful because, again, I feel he will sensationalize certain things. He will uh, right. try to twist certain things to his agenda, and, you know, that's my, my two cents on him. I think that was more Nicholsworth, if you ask me. But uh, <laughs> all right, yeah. how to get it out? Um, all right, yeah. Let me let me jump in here, and uh, because I I almost wholeheartedly disagree. Um, okay. Uh, I I have you know uh, said on on this station and to you personally uh, that over the last month or so I have been myself pulling away from. You know, listening to Alex as much, um, and uh, but it's for completely different reasons. And um, you know, first of all, on the on the on the piece in question last week, um, yes. You know, I I think that you also left a little bit out because I I think that you flirted with almost calling last week. That is, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, but I, I thought you almost right. flirted with calling Alex ignorant for his stance. On, on Oklahoma City, calling it a false flag. Um, after yourself yeah. calling it, well, hold on, just after you yourself right. called it a mini 9-11. So, you know, one, I wanted to make sure that we're reviewing the same kind of evidence in, in regards to, you know, Oklahoma City here. Because I think to call it, you know, anything but a false flag is you know, being naive. And... Um, well. I, I, I just want to say I don't like the term false flag. I think that's that's Alex's little pet term that he likes to use. I realize that it certainly has some historical connotations to it, uh, but he has latched on to that in a way that, that almost just makes me want to turn my head and vomit. Um, well, okay, now, but I think that's, you know, it's a commonly accepted it, term for a government-run operation against its own people. Um, it is, but it sounds like something Glenn Beck would say. That's that's where that's where I draw the line. You know, <laughs> I actually, I, yeah, I disagree. I think it's something that it's a place where Glenn Beck refuses to go, and that's why I don't like Glenn Beck. No, um, you know, I, again, I, I'm just saying. I, I think it's a um, uh, you know, it's it's a convenient uh, coverall term. 
Uh, I think the, the reality is there are some subtle differences between Oklahoma City and 9-11. Um, I, I think that, you know, uh, however, I think there are some similarities, and I think if we're going to stand back and look at what those similarities and what those differences are, um, is the the um, the proposed level of involvement of the government, okay? I think in both cases we can certainly say the government was heavy-handed in the cover-up, okay? Um, in both cases can we say that there was absolutely a knowing element of the government that had to be involved in pulling it off? Maybe, maybe not. I mean, we know that of 9-11. We know that you couldn't have gotten away with having drills that same day right. uh, that, that involved right. uh, supposedly planes hitting hitting buildings, et, et cetera. Okay. Um, I, I don't, I have not seen the evidence, and maybe it exists. I'm just saying I haven't seen it, uh, which proposes the idea that the, the government was unquestionably, uh, certain aspects of the government were unquestionably a knowing part of setting up the Oklahoma City bombing, and even if they were, even if they were, what bothers me is the simple fact that Alex Jones has an agenda of painting the government as this big evil, uh, you know, conspiracy against the people, um, and that that turns me right off whenever I hear him. You know, I honestly don't want to hear him talking about 9-11 any more than I want to hear him talking about Oklahoma City, because I feel like... Uh, he's pushing that that you know Tea Party libertarian esque idea of uh, government is the bad guy versus government being the victim of the the powerful corporatocracy one percent etc. Um, so so if I if I confuse that in last well, week's show, I just want to clarify that now. Well, I mean to to say they're a victim, I think is. Uh... Would, is an equally bad choice. Um, a willing victim. Uh, well, what's, maybe. what's willing in that sense? Though? Uh, you know, what's, I mean, but, is willing, you know, uh, when you create a system but, where but people. Look, I mean, let's just get on point here, back on point here for a minute, in, in terms yeah, of ahead. Alex Jones. You know, I mean, first of all, we have to give the man some credibility. He's been doing this for 20 years. He started off with a, you know, with a with a public access show and built up what he has today, you know, essentially by his own, you know, will and determination. I mean, one one thing you hear a lot of things about Alex Jones out there, uh, you know, snippets on his, you know, like Pierce Morgan and and that and his rants and those type of things. And uh, but one thing you don't hear. Right, certainly is is you know ex employees or uh, uh, you know things of that nature. People coming and saying you know Alex Jones did this, wronged me this way, that way, and uh, you know I forget exactly what you said uh, you know a few minutes ago. It was right when I was having difficulties there with with uh, my connection, but um, um, yeah, I'm just losing that thought. But uh, you know. As he says in that in that video clip specifically, you know, he's like, I have done three films on Oklahoma City, and I have talked to, you know, the victims, and I have talked to the police that lived. I've talked to the families of the ones that did it. He's like, I know every single aspect of that day and that event, and I can say unquestionably that it was a false flag. Now, whether you like that term or not, it doesn't matter, but, um, you know, to his point, uh, I, I think you do have to give him a little credit um, for for his career and uh, his conviction. Um, now, you certainly might not like his, uh, you know, approach and his bravado and and all. There's a lot of things that I don't like about Alex Jones. Obviously, the the, the religious aspect to it, and uh, yeah, I agree. There is some fear mongering on there. But, uh, you know, as we, as we discussed, I think the only way to really, you know, I have listened to Alex Jones now uh, for about three years, pretty heavily. And as I, you know, will tell anyone listening right now, as I have told people in the past, so to, to, for me, in my opinion, to really appreciate Alex Jones is to listen to him for at least six months, you know, pretty regularly. We're at then I think you get every side of 
of Alex Jones. And you'll realize that he's much less of the of the picture that you paint and much more of the I mean, I can't even begin to tell you how many times um, he talks about just wanting people to come together, people of all races, people of all sexual orientations, whatever it may be. That And that, you know, his one and sole purpose is to shed light on the global elite and the people that have taken over, as he puts it, so often and 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 – I think we should highlight that right now because, as you put it, he talks about the government. He really doesn't. All right, maybe on a on a day or a given thing, he just generalizes by saying the government. But, but more times than not, what he does is say, "Look, our government has been taken over by this corporate elite," and that is what he is trying to wake people up to. And in my opinion, he's woken more people up than you know all the front desk clerks of all the hotels in, in this country. Um, so, you know, I, I mean, dating back all the way, you know, you brought up 9-11. I mean, this is a man that had only been around a few years and, again, doing just doing public access. And two, three months before 9-11, predicted 9-11. And, you know, said a major event is going to go down. And said that the the... Uh, they're going to use a boogeyman like in like a Osama bin Laden to pin it on. Has, is he right all the time? No, of course not. But you know, again, by and large, I think we got to instead of looking at you know one Facebook episode or one Pierce Morgan episode, look at the body of work, which is twenty years, you know, strong now. Well, I I understand that. I absolutely understand where you're coming from and all of that, okay? Uh, I would like to point out that, you know, his his whole prediction of something big is going to happen soon was something that, that many people were saying. Um, uh, you know, not a lot of people. There's a difference between many and a lot. I want to make that distinction. However, yes, he, he, you know... Does, and people some going on air and saying it as well. Right, exactly. And, and, and does he deserve some credit for that? Certainly. However... Okay, here's here's kind of my 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 thinking on on you know having sat back and listened to what you just said, is that you know first of all, um, you know re- re- respecting his career, I feel like his career was more a matter of now. I'm gonna before I even get into that, let me just say this: I do defer to you as being a bigger expert on Alex Jones than myself. Um, you know, you talked about you need to listen to him for at least six months to get a handle on it. Uh, I probably listened to him for about four months before I really started to tune out and decide this was not, um, uh, you know, th- there was there was a serious problem with with the information that was being delivered to me, um, and you know to to bring up things like you know well he's had a 20 year career and so on and so forth I feel like you know his career has been more in marketing than it has been in journalism I, I think that. You know, he, he has found a way to reach a, a respectable-sized audience, uh, more so than than possibly anybody else in all media. Uh, but that doesn't necessarily validate any of the claims that he's making about anything. Um, I feel that uh, when it comes to the Oklahoma City thing, and he says stuff like, uh, you know, well, I did three movies on this, and, you know, I interviewed all these people, uh, I know everything that happened, you know, blah, blah, blah. I, I think that is the most... Um, bullshit bravado statement you can possibly imagine because you can interview everybody and their fucking grandmother and still not know what the hell happened. Um, you know, we've certainly seen with, with the 9-11 uh, stuff as an example, which, again, I am I admit I am more familiar on than, than the Oklahoma City bombing. While I do believe the Oklahoma City, City bombing had a similar aspect that we're not being told what really happened, um, I, I think to to stand back just because you did three movies on it and interviewed all these people does not mean that you knew who did what, when, and why. Okay, um, you can do a thousand. No, it doesn't, but it doesn't mean that he. Yet. It doesn't mean that he doesn't. Also, all it means is that he's done extensive research into it, and you know his show is an opinion show, right? And right. he's coming right. out and giving his opinion. So, I mean, I think oh, to your larger point of of you know, proceed with caution uh, about Alex Jones. I mean, I would say that about anyone, and, and it's one of the main 
you know, yeah. things I wanted yeah. to talk about yeah. alt media in general is that you have to yeah. proceed with caution yeah. with anyone and everyone. Um, yeah. And I, I, I kind of want to wrap up this segment here. Um, yeah. So, you know, let me just say this, you know, I mean, outside of, of you know, the, the, the 9-11 and the extensive research that he has done there as well, and, and again, right. documented, right. resourced, everything else. But, you know, I mean, here's a guy, he broke into Bohemian Grove, for God's sakes, and he filmed all those political nutbags you know, dance around a, 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 and howling around a big old owl when no one else <laughs> in the media was even talking about it. I mean, he's yeah. been at the forefront of Bilderberg. He's been at the forefront and shining the light on the Fed. And, you know, what I like most about Alex is that he has interviewed almost everybody, you know? I mean, and, yeah. and really yeah. good long interviews, too. Not this, you know, two-minute crap you get on, you know, guests on Fox. But yeah. I'm talking current and former CIA, military, politicians, whistleblowers, all of the highest oh, order. Absolutely. Absolutely, well, and, I, and I don't. I don't mean to spend an hour in that at all. All, all right. I want to say, all I want to say, all I want to say to, to that is this: is just to say, listen, you know, it's it's you can have these people who are, you know, again, flying the flag of alternate media, who have interviewed everybody and their grandmother, okay, but they still have certain preconceived notions uh, that I, I think are very much pulling away from what they're trying, you know. The, the fact that they're trying to, to promote truth. And I'm going to leave aside the fact that he, he's a Christian, aside, you know, and again, I'm not going to pick on him for being a fat man, but I will pull in the, the, the fact that... Yeah, you know, so I'm going to have to lose some people before we get together, Adam Iser. <laughs> <laughs> and, no, and I don't... All right, hey, man, I, we I are, we're that. running a little bit over here, so let's, let's, I, let's I wrap up wanna, the Alex Jones segment. Yes, absolutely. Let me just, let me just cap it off with this to say that um, you know, again, you can have these people who have, uh, who have interviewed everybody and their grandmother and so on and so forth, but when they're still promoting capitalism, when they're still, let alone promoting Christianity and things like that, um, you, you can't really stand back and call them objective. You can't really stand back and say, you know, my, my problem with Alex is that the, the, at the end of the day, the, the agenda that he's promoting is really no different than the agenda that's being promoted by the Koch brothers, by a lot of other people who are trying to uh, turn everybody yeah. against. Yeah, let, me, let, me no. finish. let me just say, let me just say, okay, he he, you know, he wants to see a, you know, he's a free marketist. Okay, he wants to see less regulation mm -hmm. in capitalism. Um, uh, you know, this is the type of thing that the moment that, that somebody is on the same page as those power mongers, you have to step back and ask, okay. At what level does their objectivity sort of leave them and they're still sort of buying certain aspects of the indoctrination? And that's that's all I'm I'm trying to point out here is that, you know, when you, sure. you have somebody who is, is an admitted conservative capitalist uh, sending these kind of ideas to you, you have to ask yourself, at, at what point are they putting the, the conclusions before the hypothesis? And just be aware of that and just watch out for that. I'm not saying don't listen to Alex Jones, but be aware of that. Watch out for that sort of thing with him, with anybody else. I've tried to expose people to the the incarnation and the, the, you know, bullshit that goes along with things like capitalism, conservatism, um, Christianity, yeah. et cetera. When you have somebody that believes that, you need to step back and say, okay, what is what is it that they're feeding me that is about truth and what is it that they're feeding me that is about their beliefs? And... That's all I'm saying. Well, I think, and you have to ask that question with with virtually everybody. Um, Very true. So, Very true. You know, absolutely, and uh, uh, you know, I don't think there is any one person out there that's the answer, the end all, be all, right? Sure, um, we are. But my point being that <laughs> is that right. <laughs> he has, um, you know, I think paved the way for for a lot of awakened people. And and uh, you, you have to give him his due for that. Uh, she, you know, positive solution side and everything else. But uh, uh, you know, because I do think he falls so short in the solution department, and um, uh, among other things. But you know, yeah. again, yeah. 
you know, when he's sending, you know, and he doesn't have a big reporting staff, but when he's sending reporters that are asking the only real questions at, you know, something like the Boston bombing, or he's sending reporters down actually to the uh, the border as, you know, it's it's, you know, being crossed over in droves, or if he's sending people to the West Coast to get radiation <laughs> readings as, you know, we need more of that. Okay, we need right. more of that. Um, uh, and and yeah, there's there's some stuff that I personally don't care for, and is not my cup of tea. But uh, you know, the essence, uh, and and you got to bring the discerning eye, like you do with everything. But the essence of of what he's established and what he's done and what he's doing, uh, again, we just need more of. So. Uh, with that, let's take uh, our first break um, of the evening, and I'm going to actually uh, break from our our, our norm of uh, you know kind of uh, traditional stand-up comedy, and this is uh, uh, in the uh, in the um, with the uh, OKC uh, the Oklahoma City uh, talk that went on last week and this week and it being the anniversary last week. And I missed it actually, uh, the day before, uh, or no, the day of the day before our show. Um, as I said, one of my, uh, favorite alt media personalities right now is, uh, James Corbett. And, uh, he had a very, uh, popular viral video, uh, about nine 11, nine 11 in under five minutes. And it's you know it's a kind of a satirical look at 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 the uh, at the day and the event. Well, he put one out on Sunday about Oklahoma City as well. So uh, I figured, with uh, everything that we were talking about and how this got started, I thought it would be a good thing to play that. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to um, uh, we're going to play James Corbett, uh, Oklahoma City: A Conspiracy Theory, and then we're going to come back and. Uh, Go to Bax with Backstage Pass. So this is Front Row at the Freak Show. I am Crafty. He is Atomizer. And uh, we will be back. I believe this is about, uh, yeah, almost five minutes. So uh, be back right after this. On the morning of April 19, 1995, a decorated Gulf War combat vet blew up the federal building in Oklahoma City using a truck bomb that he didn't build and a rider truck that he didn't rent with the help of a passenger who didn't exist. Having just gotten away with the largest act of terrorism on U.S. soil to date, the Fort Bragg trained Special Forces Chief Drip Dropout blended in with the crowd by making his getaway in a car without a license plate and was immediately pulled over. The ATF was the supposed target of the attack, but luckily all of their agents were out of the office that morning. Later that day, the president boldly declared, We will find the people who did this. And when we do, justice will be swift, certain, and severe. Except for John Doe number two. John Doe number two. John Doe number two. Who, according to the FBI, never existed. In McVeigh's unprecedented three and a half week trial, the prosecution didn't show the CCTV footage of him and John Doe number two parking the rider truck. Didn't explain why 24 separate witnesses mass hallucinated the existence of John Doe number two didn't explain why the government was testing truck bombs and the army was storing rider trucks at Camp Gruber right before the bombing, and didn't talk to the FBI informants who blew the whistle on the plot. But they did collaborate with the CIA, and they did convict McVeigh as the lone wolf bomber and Terry Nichols as his bomb-constructing accomplice. Still, a bunch of crazy conspiracy theorists, including 300 bombing victims, insist on talking about facts and evidence and refuse to simply believe what they've been told a million times by people in tailored suits with well-coiffed hair. They quote the U.S. Army Brigadier General and the FBI Crime Lab whistleblower and the inventor of the neutron bomb who point out the physical impossibility that the Ryder truck bomb did the damage to the building, but that doesn't matter because if there were other bombs in the building that day, we would have heard about them. The second explosive was found and diffused. I think he said another bomb. The Justice Department is reporting that a second explosive device has been found. They then found a third device which was also larger than the first. And I see another bomb truck going, so apparently they're going to try to get out that third bomb. The FBI claims to have lost the footage showing McVeigh and John Doe number 2, parking the truck in front of the Murrah building that morning, but that's understandable because the Bureau has a lot of important evidence to store. Terry Nichols insists the FBI was involved in the plot, but thankfully a judge has saved us the trouble of listening to him by preventing lawyers from deposing him. There was a bomb squad truck parked across the street two hours before the blast, but that just shows the authorities were prepared for anything. And... 
Other documents obtained by 2020 show that someone called the executive secretariat's office at the Justice Department in Washington and said the Morrow building had been bombed. But this was 24 minutes before the blast. But that just shows the public was unusually vigilant that morning. Also, apparently, before the bombing, Governor Frank Keating's brother, Mark, had been working on a novel about a terrorist bombing in Oklahoma City. Stranger still, one of the characters in the novel was named Thomas McVeigh. But that's probably just a coincidence. McVeigh wrote a letter to his sister where he admitted to being a secret Special Forces operative, and he complained to friends of the pain in his ass from an army-implanted microchip. But that's crazy, because if he didn't actually leave the army in 1991, there would be proof of that. This man never existed. And if you say otherwise, you're a crazy government-hating nutjob who deserves to be locked in a cage for the rest of your life. Likewise, him, her, them, her, and him. And him and him. McVeigh was not executed on May 16, 2001 as scheduled because... The FBI had failed to turn over thousands of pages of evidence to McVeigh's defense attorneys. But the execution went ahead on June 11th. In a highly unusual and secret agreement, no autopsy was performed. One witness said he was still breathing, and the prison officials admitted his hearse was a decoy. Then, the case was officially closed. This is the story of OKC, as told to you by the same truth-tellers behind... Perhaps a profoundly lonely man who craved attention, but found consolation in doing good. And... When the helicopter we were traveling in was forced down after being hit by an RPG. And... We're, we're with the rebels. And he said, oh, you're with the rebels? And they started beating him. Oh, you're with the rebels? Don't you support Bashar? And if you question any part of this story, you are a paranoid, wingnut, birther, truther, tenther, prepper, conspiracy loon who should feel guilty for having been born. If you love baseball, fluffy kittens, hot dogs, Barbie, Star Wars, and freedom, you will never, ever bring up any of these points ever again. Ever. This message has been brought to you by the friends of the FBI, ATF, DOJ, CIA, SPLC, MSM, and the U.S. Army. And remember, ignorance is strength. Conspiracy, maybe. Screwed. Definitely. Hey, you're listening to the front row at the Freak Show on blogtalkradio.com. For all things Freak Show, please visit us at frontrowatthefreakshow.com. Find us on Twitter, at Adamizer1 and at, at the Freak Show, And of course, Front Row at the Freak Show on YouTube and Facebook. All right, you freaks be good now, you hear? At the foothills of the river, I trip. Fall into frustration again. Well, all right. And we are back. At the front row at the Freak Show, uh, Atomizer, uh, did you get a yeah. chance to listen to that, or did you take a little smoke break? No, I, I actually, uh, I'm outside the whole time tonight, so I've uh, been able to smoke. Uh, oh, fantastic. Time. And, uh, no, I got to listen to the whole thing. Uh, the, the only single criticism, and I think I, I brought this up to you before, um, uh, when we were discussing Alex Jones, et cetera, is this idea that because, um, you know, certain branches or individuals within the government were um, potentially involved in the, again, wittingly or unwittingly, uh, in the creation of this disaster that we refer to as the Oklahoma City bombing, um, to then use that to paint the entire government as being, you know, this single evil entity, uh, I, I find that, you know, I, I, I have a lot of issue with that. I, I think that there are also, you know, I, I've worked with the government. I've worked with, um, uh, you know, state governments and federal governments. And I, I feel like there are certainly, uh, which isn't to say that I condone what they do, uh, even as a whole. But I, I think there is this this mentality to say that because government agencies or government, you know, government officials were involved in a particular thing, uh, thereby implicates the government as a whole. Uh, that's the one thing that, that kind of makes me just shy away a little bit. Other than that, I think it was an excellent report. I think that, uh, you know, it brought up a lot of the key points. And as I say, you know, no different than the Boston bombing, I, I think that, you know, or 9-11 or anything else, um, uh, we do need to ask these kinds of questions. We do need to demand answers. We do need to demand accountability. Uh, but again, I, I just I, I stop at the idea that um, you know again because some government officials or some government agencies may or may not have been involved in it uh, that that suddenly puts the entire government as a whole on trial. If the government as a whole is on trial, 
they should be on trial for having sold out uh, to the the people who you know would have paid them to do this sort of thing in the first place. Oh, right. I mean, it's, yeah, and I hear you, and it's a valid point. But I, I mean, I think it's like saying, you know, when we talk about megacorps, right, uh, and and they're taking over of the government or whatever. It's uh, you know, it's certainly not every mega corporation, and it's certainly not. Uh, you, you know the case. Uh, it, nothing is ever 100% through and through, uh, right? But uh, um, uh, you know when you when you start talking about majority of, by and large, um, you know which I which I think is the larger point. I mean, our our, our government on a whole has been taken over uh, by corporate interests and. I Right. So does that mean every congressman and every senator and and uh, all the way down to you know the guy pushing a pencil at the Veteran Affairs Office is a uh, evil scumbag worthy of jail time? No. <laughs> but um, you, know, you know, I also don't. I, you know, I, I, go that ahead. Leads me, that leads me to a spot where I got I got to ask you. I got to put you on the spot here for a second, Crafty. I got to ask you a question mm-hmm. of the. Uh, now, I, I realize I'm the first person to say the President of the United States is nothing but a, sc- a corporate spoke per- spokesperson these days. Uh, but, but given the field of people who have either announced or are, are likely to announce, uh, is there anybody that you're willing to uh, support uh, as being at least better than the PAC? That actually has a legitimate shot? Or well, please add a- Let's leave that. Let's leave that one aside because I've been in that debate with people for too long over the last, uh, you know, four to six weeks. Uh, let's assume that that everybody has a shot, um, uh, but uh, we're talking about people who might potentially run, uh, either who are have already announced their candidacy or who might actually throw their hat in the ring. Uh, whether or not they have well, a can legitimate, I, can I say like Jesse Ventura? Do you think that he's going to take a, a shot at it in one form or another? Well, gets, it gets bounced around out there. So, I mean, he, he has a, a set amount of criteria. He said, if I can get on the ballot in all 50 states and if I'm allowed to debate, I would consider it. Okay. So, all right. I would, uh, all right. I'll keep close enough. So... Uh, you know, uh, I guess with that caveat, um, you know, a guy like Jesse, and you know, again, obviously that not that I agree with Jesse Ventura across the board, but I think that Jesse would be the kind of person that would come in and, uh, you know, uh, go against absolutely pretty much every single recognized standard that's been established over the last forty or fifty years, and uh, actually do some cleaning house. Uh, you know, that, no, I, I, go ahead. I, I was saying I, I don't disagree with that in the sense, you know, in, in terms of your statement that you know he would uh, absolutely be a, a, a severe change, uh, you know. But it, much like with the Alex Jones type of thing, I, I would worry about some of his preconceived notions about particular things. Um, uh, and the reason I bring it yeah. up is just because uh, you know who's on the verge of, of you know announcing, and, and last I've heard. Um, uh, he's very close to, to a yes on this. I don't think he's actually announced today, uh, but he said as of a couple of days ago, I'm within a couple of days of announcing um, uh, whether or not I'm, you know, simply yes or no, and I'm leaning towards yes, or at least that's what his staff is saying. What do you think about Bernie Sanders? Oh, um, well, also, region you know, one up here, bit... I just want to say. <laughs> yeah, no. No, I mean, you know, I I probably don't know enough about him, but look, I I, I kind of it, and maybe it's to a fault. He's been a part of the political scene so long, right? Um, yeah. And entrenched in it, so I really don't see uh, like he might talk a great game before getting in, but you know, to get there. And once in, I I think it would be business as usual. Um, I I think he would be overwhelmed by the uh, pressures of of who he actually belongs to and works for, and uh, and it, you know so See, it's I, tough I for me to, to. 
I, I just want to throw out there that, that you know, again, I, I, that possibility certainly exists with any candidate, absolutely. Um, but my problem, I, I've done a lot of debates lately with people who are supporting, and I call her Shillery, uh, because she did serve on the board of Walmart. She has voted for Monsanto on every single fucking vote that's been out there. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, you know, I, I have no – I would jump off a bridge before I would vote for Hillary, Hillary Clinton, absolutely. Um, uh, and and to contrast, in, at least within the Democratic Party, if I was to contrast her with somebody that I feel would have a at least a shot at standing up to the corporation, standing up to the banks, um, fighting for the working man, and trying to do something about this income inequality, which I feel is the core of our problems right now, uh, you know, the top two choices I would have would be either Bernie Sanders or Elizabeth Warren. I, I, and I'm not just throwing Elizabeth Warren in there because I want to show that, you know, hey, I'm not anti-women. Uh, you know, anybody who follows my Facebook tweet, uh, tweets, or I'm sorry, my, my tweets on Twitter knows so well I'm not anti-women or, or anything even remotely close to that. Yeah. Uh, but I think between the, you know, she's already said she's not going to run. Uh, he is, again, leaning towards a yes. He wants to see if he can run a credible campaign, et cetera. Uh, but he is the only one that I have seen um, who who might have at least a remote shot in hell who is specifically speaking up against the the income inequality uh, and, and the problems that I see as being the, the major core of the – I mean, you know, Bernie, Bernie's a socialist. He, he's not – you know, let's not – you know, let, let's not, not uh, get into the gray areas about this. He certainly is. Uh, does that mean he can't win the general election? Does that mean he can't even win the primary? Who knows? Uh, but I would certainly, you know, given given the background I've stated economically on this show many a times, I would much rather see a socialist than, than what, you know, 99.9% of the other options are, which are just different variations on capitalism. Uh, socialism is still capitalism, but nonetheless... Uh, you know, he, he's, um, uh, he's my, he's my boy right now. I'm, I'm, I'm just going to give a little right. plug for him for two seconds. He's my boy right now. I'm, right. I'm gonna back I would for put him yeah. ahead of either of the women that you mentioned, uh, including Elizabeth Warren. I think she's full of shit and uh, I'll just leave it at that because I would like yep. to get to our new segment here, um, in the front row at the freak show. And, um, uh, that is the backstage pass. Um, uh, our boy, as I said at the top of the show, our boy Bax is uh, going to be a new uh, permanent fixture here in the front row, and he's going to be joining us at least at, uh, around this time every week uh, to espouse uh, some of his uh, uh, opinions and angles on, on the topic at hand. And uh, so why don't I see his uh, – he is here, so why don't we get him on and uh, – Let's go to Bax. Bax, are you with us? I am. What's going on, guys? How are you doing? Uh, doing well. Just busy, 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 busy. <laughs> Ain't we all? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes, indeed, we are. Um, and uh, uh, Bax, uh, you know, thanks again for... Uh, Riding shotgun with Adam Eyes last week. You guys did a great job, and uh, I am excited to hear what uh, what you got to say for us uh, here tonight. Um, let me just uh, before you get going, let me just say we will be uh, opening up the phone lines for any and all that want to call in. It's going to be six four six 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 eight eight seven five six. If you want to uh, jump in now and get at the top of the queue, uh, you know probably in uh, about ten minutes or so we'll. So, again, it's 646-668-8756. We would love to hear from you. Uh, get your take on uh, Alt Media, Alex Jones, Oklahoma City, uh, Crafty, Atomizer, Bax, uh, any of us, Elizabeth Warren, um, or something totally different. Go, go off the board. Uh, it's all good. So, uh, with that all said, Bax, what do you have for us tonight, my friend? Well, I did some research, and um, I wrote a I wrote a piece here that I like to share. It's kind of uh, it's a little more broad than something I would normally do, but again, I've got finals coming up and t ball with the little ones, and 
and all that jazz. So um, I'd like to share a little piece I wrote with you guys in the audience. The media encompasses many faces given today's current technology. Media, in its many forms, has become a staple in the lives of most Americans. Our humble beginnings as a country saw committees of correspondence that would disseminate information from the larger governmental-type bodies. One must consider that early, before technological advancements, the only way to receive information was to witness it or hear about it from the men who were paid to give speeches, such as the town crier or, more infamously, the four-minute men who... um, it was authorized by the U.S. President Woodrow Wilson to give four-minute speeches. Um, and it was also called the, the Committee on Public Information. So you have you know, a large governmental body disseminating what information they feel is best for the people. Uh, literacy was not common in our country until around the 50s. We now see a world in which paper versions of media are all but disappearing, replaced by a digital avalanche of ones and zeros that translate into pictures and words on a screen. Consider that what we use, these various devices, is mostly for entertainment. Then remember that all information given as pertinent news is presented in an entertaining way. Can you remember all the graphics shown on the news during Desert Storm or any other horrible event, for instance? Uh, Mass media is named as such because it is aimed at the masses of citizens. So it is worth your consideration to evaluate how news is presented and why so much emphasis is put on the entertainment value with dazzling effects and news alerts. Not every story is worthy of an alert, however most receive one now. While our culture has become significantly more diverse, the ownership of news outlets remains within the hands of a select few. The sheer number of channels and oppositional stations, such as the perceived Republican Fox News and its Democratic counterpart, I'm doing air quotes, by the way, its Democratic counterpart, CNN, gives the illusion of choice. Americans are led to believe that stations broadcast news and events that are close to their ideologies, when in actuality these companies that control your viewing choices are owned by around six major conglomerates. How would you see your choices if you knew six of your friends owned all of the television stations and retained ultimate control over what is released on the air? Likely you would smell a rotten egg in the bunch. The job of journalists, whether they write or perform on TV, is to bring comfort to those who are confused or curious and confuse and expose those who are comfortable and intentionally confusing. Ownership clouds conversation in the 24-hour news cycle. TV stations are, in fact, a business. They try to maximize profits. They sell spots to advertisers, and they pay big money for these spots, around $110,000 a pop, to be exact. These ads are aimed to manipulate us into purchasing a product. Shows are aimed at specific audiences as well. This includes every channel, whether they peddle news or pop culture. Self-preservation is key to understanding what is put forth into the social narrative. It is rare for a TV personality to leave a high-paying job on principle. Any show has an agenda, pushing their view or trying to reveal what they see as truth or even making money. You know, it doesn't matter if it's alternative media or mainstream news. Everyone has their own agenda. And, you know, a lot of people are trying to be truthful and trying to push what they see as the truth. And others are just trying to, you know, put a pervasive viewpoint through. There's no room for outside-the-box thinking um, and investigation within the 24-hour news cycle, it seems. All these extra hours, besides the recycled news stories that play over and over and over, these extra hours are filled with unimportant dribbles, such as the Kardashians' oversized and talentless ass. The initial rise (laughs) of publications gave way to investigative journalism and sought to bring down tyrants like Standard Oil. Look at the socialist newspaper Appeal to Reason, for instance, who brought forth exposés like Upton Sinclair's The Jungle in serial form that exposed the meat industry and shady slumlords. And this publication had around 760,000-plus people at its zenith during its 22-year weekly run. Uh, Independent media is the better way to refer to other avenues in which we seek our information. We have now begun to turn to the Internet and radio because it is the last bastion of hope in the controlled world. My poli-sci teacher called the Internet the Wild West for now because there may come a day when that, too, is controlled by a select few. So when you see a newscaster give a goofy smile when they speak of a UFO or a story that has gone viral and cannot be stopped, remember that these are tactics to pull you away from these stories that they don't want you to see. The information they hide is at the tips of our fingers for now. 
Alternative or independent media is our way to bypass those gatekeepers who block our path to the news of all kinds. Even Facebook is a source of news for some people. And like Facebook, the Internet is filled with deviants and trolls who love to spread mis- or disinformation in a more blatant way than mainstream media often does. For now, we must use our power behind the keyboards and microphones to reveal the real news and ask the real questions as they occur. We must keep holding those accountable who can never wash the blood off of their hands. And that is my monologue. That is your backstage pass. Well done, sir. Well done. Thank you. Absolutely. Yeah, so absolutely. I, have, I, I just want to say I think that um, um, if if the number one takeaway out of that um, for me, and it's something that I, I try to, to impress upon people all the time, is that media is, a, you know, especially uh, mainstream media, but to a lesser extent even alt media, it's a business. It, this is a capitalist world. And uh, there, there is a lot of uh, pushing of the agenda of the sponsors. And we need to remember that, you know, again, that, that in a lot of cases will trump truth. And you can't, if you have to go into every single media outlet, whether it's alternative, whether it's mainstream, it doesn't matter, with a certain level of skepticism uh, and let them prove themselves to you. Uh, whether that's Alex Jones, or whether that's CNN, whether that's Fox News, doesn't really matter. Go into it with objectively and try and pick out, um, uh, you know, whether or not this person is more interested in truth or more interested in what they believe. So I hope everybody uh, at home is taking notes on uh, what to, what Bax just told us all. Yeah, and uh, I will I will uh, echo that sentiment and add to it that uh, you know it's it's funny I was kind of struggling and 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 I knew it was there. Uh, but I, I just couldn't come up with it because I, I too, kind of uh, am not a fan of the word, you know, alternative uh, media because it suggests that it's in some way inferior or something. Uh, and, and you know, independent media uh, is a much better label. Um, uh, Absolutely. For and that's, and uh, I, I, in, my, in my research, I found that um, – the term alternative kind of gives the idea that we are self-marginalized as though we prefer to be the alternative to where independent media means that, you know, we do this because in large part, most independent media bodies are not paid. You know, we're not harvesting these huge benefits and trying to appease the people who give us our, our money. You know, the, the advertising. Unless you're Alex Jones. Unless you're Alex Jones. Yeah. <laughs> And that's, I think, you know, I, I think this is a good point to, to, for us to take just a second to promise to our, our listeners and our, our, you know, the folks who are tuned into this show that, you know, what, um, while we're ab- actively looking for sponsors, things like that, uh, we will not pander. We will not let our sponsors dictate content. Um, uh, you know, I would rather turn down uh, you know, a hundred thousand dollars of, of sponsoring, you know, and, and maybe I'm just speaking for myself, Craft. You can echo me if you want to. But I would rather turn down. A, <laughs> I'm guessing that he would echo me, uh, but I would rather turn down a hundred thousand dollars than uh, you know sit here and, and lie to you or twist the truth in such a way that uh, uh, you know that uh, it's not being brought to you uh, bareback, so to speak, uh, you know, without a condom. <laughs> and that ad was no, brought to you by absolutely. Morley Cigarettes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but no. no, but you know, it does actually yeah. it, it it does bring me back a little to the Alex Jones thing, and and because one of the you know major knocks on Alex is uh, you know the the product pushing, right? Yeah. And uh, and uh, you know, to an extent, it is. Uh, warranted, I guess, but you know, I mean, you said it, Adam. I mean, right now, I mean, number one, we are, we are, we can only play with the cards that that we are dealt and the hand that we are dealt, and and right now, we all need to survive, and and by doing that means right, earning fiat currency and 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 making money, um, and whether it's Alex Jones or. Uh, 
you know, Rush Limbaugh or whoever it is, you know, you get to any sense of national level and you're talking sponsors. And, you know, to me, Alex is doing nothing different than any other, you know, national talk show host in, in the fact of he's running ads and personally endorsing. So, uh, but, hey, at the very least, see, I kind of look at it in the good sense of he said, well, you know what, I'm going to push my own stuff. And, and at least then I know I'm putting my name behind it. I'm putting, you know, I can come out and say, you know, how I you know, this and that about it. And, and again, he's he's attaching his name directly to the product. So, um, you're, you're right. you know, I think that's a lot more admirable than... You know, I, I mean, I hear some guys, you know, like Rush or whatever, and then they take a break and they're pushing a bank or a, you know, uh, or, or some other company that is ultimately a part of the problem. And you're, so you're right. You're right. I, I will definitely give him credit on on the idea that you know, I do believe that he believes in his sponsors uh, at, at much more so than than anybody else at the national level. Um, you know, and, and but that's you know again. I, I just think a promise that we want to make to our users that you know, and our listeners that that it's not um, uh, it's not about the money to us. If it was about the money, we wouldn't be here right now without any sponsors yeah. talking to you. And you know, that's me right. personally, I'm out here trying to make a life in the woods, so to speak, uh, to where I don't need to support capitalism by buying or selling anything. Uh, money is not money. Is, you know, I'm one of those few people. I'm a, I'm a devout minimalist. That uh, you know you're you're not going to tempt me with money to uh, to, to turn against my principles and and again I, I believe I also speak for uh, Crafty and Bax when I say you know money is great you know nobody's gonna gonna say hey I'm not gonna take that money unless you're asking me to to bend over and take one in the ass and and basically say that something is right that isn't right I, I won't take that money you know and I think we're we're all kind of in that boat I would like to hope. I agree. I mean, yes. whether it's one listener or one million listeners, you know, I, I'm not here to make money. I'm here to to get people talking. You know, to to help people wake up. That's that's why we're here. Yep. Yep. Absolutely. You know, authenticity, and again, um, uh, you know, my morals count a lot more than any money that you're ever gonna gonna offer me. And, and I, I again, I think I speak for both Bax and Crafty when I say that you know we're we're not gonna take. I don't care how much money Walmart or McDonald's offers us until they fix their fucking labor policies. You know, we're, we're not getting any money. You know? we're, we're not getting any problems. Stop, Walmart. You know? Walmart. <laughs> Absolutely. All right, we are coming up on a break here. Bax, I, I, I want to give you the final word here on Backstage Pass. Um, uh, you know, we have another minute or so until... Uh, to our uh, our second break. So, anything uh, you wanna you wanna uh, end with here, or yeah, you know, I just um, you know, kind of to reiterate, sum up, you know, we we are here to keep the discussion alive. We are here to talk about the things that either don't get talked about or get pushed to the side. You know, we are <clears throat> excuse me, we are often marginalized because we are willing to research and think about things that others laugh about, you know, and as long as one person is out there to listen, there will always be a seat for you here in the front row. Damn right. I love it. Damn right. I love it. All right. And there you have Bax with Backstage Pass. Uh, You can look forward to, uh, to more of that each and every week here in the front row at the Freak Show. Uh, with that said, we are going to just take our second break here, and um, uh, I think you're going to enjoy this. Uh, all you freaks out there, Atomizer, uh, and uh, a couple weeks ago, I played uh, a, a guy that uh, you know it was 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 new to me, and uh, that was John Fulbright, and uh, uh, this week, same thing. Um, actually, this Friday. Uh, was was together with a with a couple of friends and um, got uh, turned on to this guy and uh, he's been around a long time and uh, you know I don't know how he 
has managed to slip under my radar, uh, but he has. And um, anyway, uh, I'll just let the song speak for itself. His name is Todd Snyder, and the name of the song is called Conservative Christian Right-Wing Republican Straight White American Male. And uh, Atomizer, I think you're going to enjoy this. So here we go. You freak, stay tuned now, you hear? There'll be more Front Row with the Freak Show coming up right after this on blogtalkradio.com. Now here's something we hope you'll really like. I'll give you the correct demonstration. Judy Pie, pound those horse teeth. Thank you so much. It's such a great honor to get to be here this afternoon with you. My name is Todd Snyder. I've been driving around this great country of ours for a great many years, making this crap up and singing it for anybody that will listen to it. I like, I like to let people know, because I'm a folk singer, I like to let people know before I go too far into my portion of the program that I'm going to be sharing some of my opinions with you over my course of the program, portion of the program. And so I like to let people know before I do that that I'm not going to be sharing my opinions with you because I think that they are smart or because I think that people need to know them. I'm going to share them because they rhyme. I didn't come down here to change anybody's mind about anything. I come down here every time to ease my own mind about everything, and it always works. So with that said, thank you all for giving me a chance to sing again today. And thank you, Willie and Neil and Dave and John for giving me a chance to sing today. This one goes like this. Conservative Christian, right-wing Republican, straight white American male. Gay bashing, black fearing, war fighting, tree killing, regional leaders of sale. A shirt tucking, frat house, and cake tapping, back slapping, hater of hippies like me. Tree hugging, peace loving, pot smoking, porn watching, lazy ass hippies like me. Again, peace loving, pro choice and gay wedding, widespread panic digging hippies like me. Skin color blinded, conspiracy minded, protesters of corporate greed. Skin color blinded, conspiracy minded, till we all end up locked up in jail by conservative Christians. Right wing Republican, straight white American male. Diamonds and dogs, boys and girls, we're living together in two separate worlds. Following leaders up mountains of shame, looking at each other to blame. I know who me and my burnout buddies. We always like to blame conservative Christians, white brain Republicans, straight white American men. Soul saving, flag waving, rush loving, lamb paving, personal friends to the quail. Remember the quail? Quite diligently working so hard to keep the free reins of this democracy. From tree hugging, peace loving, pot smoking, porn watching, lazy, ass hippies like me. Tree hugging, peace loving, barefoot and smoke singing, lazy old hippies like me.
It would help if I unmute my mic. Well, uh, I was wondering about that. <laughs> 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 I'm like, wait a minute. I don't want to interrupt if the music's still playing and the error's on my end, but, you know. <laughs> right, right. Nope, so uh, let me just say that again. That was conservative Christian, right-wing Republican, straight white American male. Like folk singer Todd Snyder. Adam Eiser, what did you think about that one? I liked it. I liked it again. You, you know, I, I hate to admit it, but you're uh, turning me on to some of this country stuff, and uh, I can live with that. <laughs> I, you know, I've always, always been somebody who said, you know, every genre has its its high points and its low points. And, uh, you know, again, you, you seem to be striking the high points, so I will give you credit for that by all means. Yeah, and i got to give credit to our friend Jimmy from the 781. Uh, who has uh, turned me on to the to the last two uh, artists that uh, I have featured here, and I like it too because it uh, you know I, I like you know kind of going on that underground uh, uh, under the radar uh, level, uh, playing stuff that uh, you know certainly you know hey I've been listening to music for a good portion of my life, and uh, this guy has been around for fifteen twenty years and. And uh, it wasn't until this weekend when I was turned on to him, and I've since, you know, uh, with the with the absolute beauty of the internet and YouTube, uh, uh, found out a lot more about him and listened to a lot more of his songs. And uh, uh, what an interesting cat that guy is, man! I tell you, uh, uh, he does a lot of talking in his shows, and uh, uh, he is uh, someone worth checking out, uh, without a doubt. Um, He's got a lot of things to say about everything. But uh, anyway, hope you enjoyed it. Uh, again, Todd Snyder and uh, uh, conservative Christian, right-wing Republican, straight white American males. So uh, let's get back to our discussion here. We got about uh, ooh, a little over 20 minutes uh, left in the show. Again, if you'd like to call in, uh, we'd love to hear from you, 646-668-8756. 646-668-8756. You can uh, call in and, and get right to the head of the class, as it were. And uh, we'd love to take your call and hear from you. It's been some good uh, live chat activity. Um, uh, I.O. has been uh, has been heating it up, and it's been great. Hey, and a few, yo. Uh, hey, hey, yo. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so that's that's been good to see, and I know that uh, we've had a few guests bouncing in and out. So uh, excellent uh, on on that front. Uh, but uh, to keep going down uh, the alt media path, and and I guess make a few uh, points here uh, that we haven't got to, if I may uh, have the floor for a couple of minutes. I guess uh, you know, as I kind of started out to say uh, that. You know, one of my goals for tonight was to try and shine a light on a few of the major uh, people and uh, platforms um, in the independent media um, that uh, that can hopefully, you know, get freaks, you know, either started or uh, further along their their path to awaken this. Um, but, you know, we do have to realize, uh, obviously, that there's a flip side to the greatness that is the Internet and uh, and alt media, and that, you know, there's a whole lot of bullshit out there. Uh, for instance, uh, I'd like to get uh, both your gentlemen's uh, thoughts on Jade Helm, uh, because I think it, it's something that perfectly highlights what, and be very wrong with <laughs> with the internet. And, you know, uh, I mean, I have I have seen everything from you know uh, this is it. Uh, that, you know, mass. Uh, we we better get ready for the FEMA camp and the internment camps and re-education camps and uh, you know, kiss your children because this is it. Um, I, I actually, uh, I you know, so today I did a, a, I just entered Jade Helm into the YouTube search bar, 
and got 245,000 results. So that's videos, 245,000 videos, uh, 43,000 this month alone. So that's roughly 10,000 videos a week on the subject. Um, and then, of course, a uh, doing a Google search, there was 35 million results. Popularity doesn't necessarily equate to um, truth, and I think we need to all recognize that. That, in fact, a lot of cases, the more popular uh, opinions are not necessarily the truthful ones. I assume, you know, again, I'm not familiar with Jade Helm, but given you set up, I'm assuming that uh, you have some issues. Oh well, <clears throat> do you know about it at all? Which would be surprising uh, if you don't. No, I, I absolutely, I have to say, uh, uh, you know, normally I, I at least have some sort of inkling. I really don't in this case. Yeah. No, I, I hadn't seen wow. Wow. wow, that's All interesting. Right. Well, uh, to, to bring you up to speed, Atomizer, um, the United States military uh, is going to be conducting extensive drills I think for a three-month period, it goes from June to maybe four months, June to September, I think I've heard. Uh, and it's going to be taking place over, I've heard, everywhere from seven to ten states uh, with thousands of troops. And the main objective of Jade Helm, I guess it's officially it's Jade Helm 15, and... Uh, you know, of course, everyone breaks down the letters, right? There's four letters in Jade, and it's green, so that means money. And uh, it's just, it's it's so unbelievable. But um, so uh, anyway, so I guess the main uh, element to Jade Helm is the military is training to blend in with the citizenry and use the citizenry in some way, shape, or form as it, as it relates to disasters happening and different, uh, you know, again, military exercises and drills, but just on a massive scale across a bunch of states, um, you know, the actual, the actual thing, I mean, Jade Hell, it is a thing, and it is going down, right? So, but of course... Everybody and their brother are taking what the drills are and putting significance of just, you know, everything from aliens attacking to, you know, they're just getting ready for the EMP attack. Yeah, it's just every, everything. So I don't know if you can add anything to that, Bax. I, you know, I probably didn't explain it that well. Uh, no, I mean, you, I, I think, uh... You no, did a good no. job. But, um, is this an operation of some point, some sort? Is that what we're talking about? It is. It's, it's an okay. official military operation exercise. Yes. Okay. All right. All right. I just wanted to clarify that point for those who, like myself, are, uh, you know, again, I, I get a lot of interesting information on my Twitter feed. I have to admit, I haven't been as active on it lately as I should be. Um, but I have not heard of this, so so I'm coming into this blind, and that's my first question. So we're talking about a military operation. Uh, go ahead, Dax. What, what's your take on it? Well, yeah, I mean, it's it's ran by the Army, and the Army actually has been quoted to saying it's a training exercise, just a regular training exercise, which they have done many training exercises on U.S. soil. They will, um, you know, they'll they'll mark up different territories. They'll often rename them, but what disturbs me is that something of this size and scope, is, I mean, this is taking place across the entire Southwest. And, yes, there are going to be, some will be armed, some will not be. Um, I guess if they're actually in town, they will have an armed band that signifies that they are a member of this operation, um, to you know, from an ordinary citizen. But I, I find it alarming that it hasn't been talked about more, you know, given the amount of results on, you know, the different search engines and the fact that they are training for urban warfare on home soil doesn't alarm anyone. I mean, I find that questionable to say the least. 
Uh, yeah, I mean, again, being new to this, I, I would definitely agree with that. There's, um, uh, yeah, that, that, that I don't recall any similar, uh, uh, you know, of all the things I have seen, uh, you know, and again, I'm, uh, we're up here in FEMA Region 1. I, I've seen Boston turn into a war zone uh, over, um, uh, you know, some very questionable evidence with regards to the Boston bombing. I, I, I would agree that, uh, you know, military drills on, uh, and, and, and you phrased it properly, military drills on domestic soil, uh, just to me, seem, uh, yeah, that seems odd. Fuck you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and I think it's worthy of note that one of these drills was being ran during the time the Boston bombing happened. So it was very convenient that well over a 1,000 military personnel just happened to be in the same vicinity of a terrorist attack running a terrorist training program. Oh, absolutely. Or an anti-terrorist training program. I apologize. Absolutely. Yeah, there's no Absolutely. doubt uh, the correlation between um, drills being run and then shit actually going down. I mean, you pointed out the Boston bombings, the 7-7 attacks in, in England, of course, 9-11. Um, uh, all had uh, drills going on uh, simulating the exact same thing that ended up happening. So, yeah, there, there, there and, and it, that's ex, it, that's a you know exactly why Jade Helm has turned into the YouTube alt media explosion that it has. Right? It's uh, here. Here comes this massive drill. So it must be a massive event that's going to happen, right? Um, and uh, uh, you know, it it kind of goes back to your point, Adamizer, of of painting the the government with a broad brush, right? I mean, it's. Um, uh, yeah. You know, I, yeah, I think there is – look, and I think I said this to Bax uh, during the week personally. And, and again, like I'm very surprised that you haven't heard about it. And that is a part of the problem, right? Yes. I, there is a I massive agree. military exercise being done in this country covering a number of states involving thousands of, uh, of, of troops. That should be reported. You're right? That right. should be mainstream. Absolutely. That should be mainstream news. Not you're, that you're there's out. anything you're nefarious, right. not any of that, but it should just be, look, this is what's going on, America. This is, you know, this is what they're yeah. going to be doing. Because, yeah, I'm, again, I'm that it, it, it just... I, I just want to say, I serve as the perfect example of somebody with, you know... Um, uh, you know, one foot in the media world, and and you know, I would call myself a veteran when it comes to uh, alt media and things like that. Again, I, I've done my alt media time. I'm now less interested in what's going on uh, in the country or in the world as a whole as I am at, at trying to set up a place that's uh, uh, you know up here in the woods that's uh, immune to whatever types of catastrophes are going to happen out there. Uh, but, you know, that's not to say I'm, I, you know, I'm, I'm tuned out. You certainly hear me every week. You know, I'm, I'm certainly uh, online a few days a week. I'm, I'm you know, I, I'm, uh, I even watch a little TV every now and again uh, when I'm at uh, the relative's place. So, you know, I, I, the fact that I haven't heard about this, I think that's a, an excellent example of this being underreported and there being a serious problem with that. I, I would, I, I didn't know about this. Uh, you know, I've been following my tweets, uh, you know, enough this week. I've been, you know, watching a little TV this week, uh, and, and yet I've heard nothing about it. I'm, I'm shocked. That, I'm as shocked as you guys. That's exactly yeah. why this is so important, you know, because we can't catch it all alone. We just can't. You're right. And, and right. Yeah. And, of course, you know, again, uh, Going back to it should be reported by mainstream media if it, if for no other reason just to keep that chain of information going right and timelines and everything else uh, uh, you know so uh, again I don't personally think it's worthy of some of the theories that are are uh, gonna, you know I mean uh, there's there's videos on Jade Helm with with hundreds of thousands of views by you know just just uh, yeah. you know, a guy in front of his in in front of his, you know, laptop camera, saying, "I think this is what's going to happen." You know, uh, oh, yeah. 
it, I got, it's got 150,000 views. It's it's. I think people are starving for the information. So. Uh, oh yeah. I, I, yeah, I it's weird, it's, man. It's weird. It, it's going to be one of those things where you know the preliminary uh, hype uh, may even uh, out outshadow whatever the reality is. But nonetheless, I'm. You know, the moment I hear that, uh, hear this kind of stuff from guys like you or whoever I hear it from, any of the alt media sources that, uh, you know, we'll talk about here in the last few minutes, I, I, I feel like, uh, you know, that's, that's exactly the problem is that there are so few people putting this information out there, uh, that, you know, people aren't hearing about it. People aren't aware. And, and that's why, uh, so much curiosity, I think, is being sparked in these situations. I, I think that, you know, if you would just address it, at least give us a fucking cover story. What's wrong with you, you know? <laughs> right. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. No, absolutely. And uh, uh, I'm, now, I'm looking up here, and I see that we got someone uh, uh, someone else from the 304 uh, looking to chime in and, and uh, uh, call into the front, front row. So we got about eight minutes left. Let's go right to... Uh, the 304 here, and uh, maybe they got some information on Jade Helm for us. So uh, well, let's let's, let's, hear it. let's do that. Yo, yo, are you with us? Yeah, yes, what's going on? Y'all? How you doing? I'm doing pretty good. I've just been listening to y'all show the whole way through, and no, I don't have much on Jade Helm other than you know that just seems like it's a uh, it's, it's unreported, and that just seems like something that they would do which I think also leads into, you know, what I was going to say, which I feel like has been, you know, a concept of the whole show really is, you know, the false flag type thing or, you know, maybe the main media. And, you know, I just feel like, you know, just everything is really a false flag that they run through their system. And it's like, you know, the system that they've created, you know, maybe those six families or those six friends you ever talked about, you know, I feel like those people have gotten in you know, to the seat to where they can control and everything. And they're the ones who have created this perfect system of checks and balances and this perfect image to where people just fall into everything. These guys in suits, they're these the, the perfect people. They don't make mistakes. They don't have ulterior motives or anything, though they've mm-hmm. set up the system to where, you know, they, they all have just made it, you know, their own little game that they can play to where they can feed into whatever they want to. It's kind of like they don't have rules even though they have this this list of all these rules that they have to live by, but there's a way that they can get out of it, and they know they're the ones who control it, so they can get out of any situation that they really want to. Granted, whenever people do get caught, they make an example out of them, so that's why you see people get, you know, slammed so hard whenever they do get caught. But, you know, I, I just think it goes back, you know, everything that they do with these, these, these bombings and everything, it, it's them putting the mask up and, and taking it off when they want to or whatever, and it's, because we let those people have that system, and that's why I feel like there's people trying to, like you talked about uh, Alex Jones, selling all his stuff and everything. And, you know, that's, that's the one thing I will say is I feel like that's what we've got to do is we've got to try to get that money so we can be seen on that larger scale. I feel like we have to have people who are trying to get seen on that larger scale to where it's like more people mm-hmm. can see what we're trying to do. You know what I'm saying? I feel like that's why Alex Jones is doing it. Granted, he may have to do it a certain way to get those other type of people. That's why he may speak some ways he does. I don't know. But granted, that's why I feel like he sells his things, and that's why he's seen by so many people is because he has access to everything just because that money he has. You know what I'm saying? And that, that's, that's the only thing, uh, you know, I think that, you know, that Alex Jones guy I heard that was one thing that was going against him was, you know, how much he tried to sell, which, you know, can be annoying. But I can't see why he's trying to do it. But, you know, that's, you know, once again, maybe why I see myself in people. I don't know. I'm just blabbing. That's just why I came in. I was trying to speak fast. I, I'm not <laughs> off, you know, here talking to you all, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's, uh, hey, you're good. Yeah, you're no, 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 man. Oh, thank you. Oh. I, I mean, you, you you raised some interesting points. Uh, I, I mean, especially, you know, rules that that, that apply to us and, and don't apply to them. Um, mm-hmm. and, and yeah, certainly, uh, you, you know, it's, it's hard and it's something I'm battling with, you know, trying to exist within the system and, uh, uh, yes. you know, everywhere, when, when everywhere you turn, uh, you know, it's, it's the system working against you, but, you know, there's a re- certain reality, you know, I've got two kids, I got, uh, you know, 
you want to get around. I mean, there's just there's there's a certain level where you have to kind of uh, uh, you know, bite the bullet and. It's the fucking slavery of it all, right there. Is that you know? Again, we understand what you're saying right now is that we have to. We absolutely have to have money to make this kind of shit work. That is the fucking right. slavery that we talk about all the time. You know, the fact absolutely. that you absolutely have to have money to make it work. And this is the the whole thing that, I, again, I'm moving up into the mountains, building myself a self-sustaining community. You know, this is this is the, the, the answer, the, the only answer I can find to that problem. It, you know, mm-hmm. I, I live nowadays between, you know, an average of $50 a week, you know, which mm-hmm. I, I think is impressive by a lot of rights. Uh, oh, but yeah. I, more can get that down to zero. You know, that's that's my my ultimate goal is to uh, you know on the one hand not support this system, but I realize what you're saying that we need to in order to get uh, you know the and and you know to not not out you know and I, even I'm going to come around on on Alex Jones's side just a little bit here and say that you know I do understand the mentality of having to uh, make money in order to get the message out there because they're, they're, that's what it takes nowadays. You know, we, we've, you got to, at the very least, you got to pay that five bucks to promote on Facebook. Like a lot of people do. It's, it's, yeah, right. it, it's, it's a money world out there in terms of marketing. Definitely. It's bullshit. And I feel like it's once again, the part of the system they created, but for real, man, I commend what you do. And I feel like more people should be doing what you do. We should be able to, you know, grow our own food and create everything that's around us with basically what, what, with everything that's just around us. We shouldn't have to go to a store to buy all this wood whenever there's all these trees around us, and you can chop the shit up and make anything that you want to, and you can grow your own food <laughs> right there. You know what I mean? Like, you know, yeah, yeah, you have a point, and that's, you know, that's part of the government's plan is, you know, they appropriate all this land. I mean, you see the land grams that are going on even now, and I think that that is part of the ultimate plan is – you know, you can't go out and find this land to be a self-sustaining person or a community because it's not available anymore. Yeah. If, yep. if you get it, you're only renting it from the government because you have to pay pay the property taxes on it, and if you don't, you're going to lose it to the government. There is that. Yeah. Aspect. You know, don't kick I, your ass out of there if you don't. You know, what I mean, it's it's bullshit, man. It, it is. We're all. I mean, those of us who own land, you know, again, we're 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 still just renting in the sense that we have to pay our taxes on it, or else the government's going to take it away. That's no different than dealing with a landlord. It is. It is true. And uh, hey, three hundred four. I'm going to thank you for your call. I'm going to let you go now, and because uh, we are coming down to our final two minutes. Uh, I mean, certainly feel free to to hang on and and, and listen to the wrap up here, but. Uh, uh, they do cut us off right at the two minute mark, so uh, uh, you know, just kind of want to ride the show out. Um, That's good. Uh, hey, I, I appreciate the uh, uh, thing. Yeah, all right, thank you, and uh, please stay tuned and and keep listening and spread the word, would you? Yeah, yeah great right there, I'll be listening. Great to hear from you, brother. Thanks. Yep. See y'all, brother. So, uh, just real quick, I I want to uh, uh, I, I want to spend a little bit more time. Uh, talking about a few of these guys, but if I could uh, uh, just rattle off a few of the guys that I have, uh, uh, again, kind of uh, put into my queue as far as regular uh, people that I listen to and, and get information from. We already started, we already talked about Alex Jones, but there's these guys, uh, STG Report, you can find them on uh, YouTube, they're fantastic, Stormcloud yeah. Gathering, uh, USA Storm. Watchdog, Adam Kokesh, Joe Rogan, the Zykos Movement, Jerry Croft. Uh, Lou Rockwell, G. Edward Griffin, uh, AMTV, We Are Change with Luke Rudowski, uh, Tragedy and Hope with Richard Grove, uh, Dr. Paul Craig Roberts, John Rappaport, Abby Martin, um, RT, the RT Network. Um, so uh, just a few names I wanted to, uh, you know, drop out there for people so they can uh, look into them and check into them. And um, I also just wanted to to mention this, and I wanted to make sure that I did. We've got to be careful. Uh, Facebook, YouTube, um, uh, and I wish we had more time to kind of go on it, but uh, there are trolls out there, right? And we know this. And uh, there are people that are literally paid to put disinformation out there. So uh, let's stay vigilant and uh, let's stay on them, and uh, we will talk more about them. Next week, 
at the front row at the Freak Show. I am Crafty. He is Atomizer. And Bax. And we are out, gentlemen. Final thoughts? Hey. 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 <laughs> <laughs> All right, boys. You be good. Later. Have a good night.